Welcome to the LinkedIn Authority Blueprint webinar by Joe Apfelbaum. I am your host. I'm the CEO of Ajax Union, a B2B digital marketing agency. I'm a LinkedIn speaker. I like helping hungry entrepreneurs go from frustration to motivation. One of my strengths is strategy, being strategic. So I'm a strategist. I like playing my strengths. I'm also a coach and a marketing expert, and I love helping entrepreneurs go from frustration to motivation. Who is this webinar for? Well, it's for people that are in B2B, business owners, anyone looking for leads and referrals, entrepreneurs, sales professionals, marketing professionals, or people that just love to learn and grow. So who are you? Which one of these resonates with you the most? But what is Ajax Union? Ajax Union is a B2B digital marketing agency. We help companies with digital marketing strategy, with lead generation, lead nurturing. We are the LinkedIn marketing experts. We reverse engineer organic growth on LinkedIn, and we're located in Dumbo in Brooklyn, New York. We have a loving team that's like a family, and many of us work remotely because we love work-life balance. One of the things that we started doing because we love working with the community and helping other people is we started offering free meetups for people that want to be more engaged on LinkedIn. We found that we bring people together. We not only are able to offer them advice on how to use LinkedIn to grow their business, but we're also able to create a community and a buzz. And we've done this many times in the past, never around LinkedIn, but now that we're doing it around LinkedIn, it's really exciting Last year, over 350 people came to our meetups, engaged LinkedIn users, and this year, we're probably going to have over 1,000 people come to our meetups because we're expanding to Miami, Los Angeles, New Jersey, New York, Brooklyn, and it's really exciting to see so many people that are interested in being super engaged and building real relationships on LinkedIn. So if you want to sign up to a future meetup, all you got to do is go to ajaxunion.com slash meetup. We have one next week in Miami, then we have one in New Jersey, then we have one in Los Angeles, then we have one in Dumbo. It's going to be exciting to see how many people are actually engaged both online and offline. But now to the meat of this. The reason why you're here is because LinkedIn is the largest networking event in the world. And people show up every single day. And what we found is that 65% of B2B companies have acquired a customer through LinkedIn. And 46% of social media traffic to corporate websites come from LinkedIn simply because LinkedIn is allowed on a corporate network, whereas Facebook and Instagram is not allowed. People use that on their phones. But LinkedIn generates three times more conversions for B2B companies than Twitter and Facebook, according to HubSpot. So LinkedIn's a real deal. They were actually purchased by Microsoft for $26.2 billion dollars and Microsoft's trying to make them profitable because LinkedIn's losing money. And Microsoft's really great at making things profitable. And the way that they're gonna make them profitable is by creating more content marketing and getting more people to benefit from organic reach. And this is where you come in. This is where you come in. Over 500 million members, 61 million senior level influencers, and 40 million decision makers. It's the most used social media platform for Fortune 500 companies, and it's so powerful. Now the question is, how engaged are you on LinkedIn? Because the truth is, 40% of people engage on LinkedIn every single day. But most people are not doing those things. Most people are not posting. And the three most important things to do on LinkedIn is Engaging, posting, messaging, those are the things. Posting, engaging, and messaging are the most important things to do on LinkedIn. And people are not doing that. They're just lurking, they're just watching. And there's a million posts going up every single day out of the 500 million posts and people are not posting. The question is why? Why are people not posting on LinkedIn? And when I ask people, I hear a lot of reasons. The question is what's your reason? Why are you not posting on a daily basis? I always tell people you either have reasons or you have results. And if you want results in your business, you have to learn not to listen to the reasons. So the popular reason is I don't have time to do it. I don't know what to post. I have writer's block. I'm afraid people will judge me, that I'll be too in their face. My content's not valuable. My connections are not interested in me and my content. Everything I share, people already know. I'm afraid of posting. 
Posting is hard. It's only for influencers. I'm not talented. I'm not the type of person I like watching. Or I posted before and I haven't gotten any engagement. So what's the point? Now, of course, there are people in financial industry, like Howard, that is not allowed to post about their business or possibly about anything else. So there are limitations. But let me tell you the different stages that people are in, and you can self-select where you are. There are the people that are technophobes. Those are the people that are afraid to use technology. Typically, they lost their LinkedIn password. They're not sure what it is, and they probably couldn't even get onto this webinar. <laughs> That's probably not you. Those people are typically in debt. They don't even know what B2B lead gen is. They need coaching to learn the basics and maybe hire a coach, get some courses, maybe buy LinkedIn for dummies to learn how to log in. Then there are the people that are a little bit higher than that. They're the lurkers. That's where most people fall into. They're unsure. They're frustrated. Maybe they're even hopeful. And they're surviving, and they're barely marketing themselves and their business. The reason why they're lurking and they're not engaging and they're not posting is because they're missing a strategy. They need to get a marketing strategy. They need to get really clear on their goals. They need to get really clear on their target market, their message, on who they're targeting. And ultimately, they need a plan and they don't have one, so they're in lurker stage. Then there are people that are in dabbler stage. What they're feeling is they, they're actually posting every once in a while. They're engaging every once in a while, but they totally fall off the deep end every once in a while because they procrastinate it. That's why they're dabbling. They're just dipping their toe in. They know it's valuable. They're getting by, but they're missing out. And their problem is that they're missing an asset library and a, a content calendar to schedule and automate their marketing. Then there are the people that are on top that are influencers. They're in control. They're confident. They're ready for growth. And they just need to figure out how to convert their influence into money, how to monetize that. And often that's better ways to monetize like creating courses and helping other people in various different ways. So if relationships are important to your business, LinkedIn needs to be important to your business. But you first have to self-select and determine where are you right now and where do you want to go. And when I say going from lurker to influencer, I don't mean that you need to be this massive influencer where you have millions of people finding you. If you have 100 ideal customers, I want you to be an influencer for those 100 ideal customers. That's really the key. I want you to stop lurking, roll up your sleeves, and start posting, engaging, and messaging with the right people and influence them and consider yourself an influencer in your niche. So I want you to write this down. Say, I want to be an influencer. Write that down. Really write it down and think it through because if you want to influence people, if you want to make money, you have to first say that you're willing, you want to be an influencer and define what influencer means. And for me, is I just want a thousand people. I want to influence a thousand people. That's it. So really write that down because a lot of people are afraid to even say they want to be an influencer because they're like, oh, an influencer means I have millions of followers. No, I want my privacy when I walk down the street. I don't want millions of people seeing me. I actually just want a thousand of the right people to see me a thousand times a year. And that's it. That's what I'm asking for. And that's why I use LinkedIn. If relationships are important to you, then LinkedIn needs to be important to you to build relationships with those people. Now, most people are performing random acts of networking. And that's why a lot of people fail at BNI. And I wrote a whole article about this. They fail at LinkedIn and they're hoping somebody will notice they're doing stuff and they're hoping. They're hoping for the best. And I hope that's not you. I hope that you actually have a strategy, which means a plan of action or a policy designed to achieve a major overall aim. Now, energy without strategy is a total waste of time. So the question is, how do you create a strategy? And it's one of the hardest things that a business owner can do, especially if you're busy doing, it's hard to be planning. That's why you got to make time for strategy. That's why you got to pay for strategy. That's why you got to prioritize strategy because measure, you have to do more than once. Cut, you can do once. But measure, you got to measure many times because once you cut, you're done. So you got to make sure that you don't waste time, waste resources. You got to be efficient and effective to make sure that you actually get a return on investment with your marketing. So we created a strategy. We created a strategy called the LinkedIn Authority Blueprint. And it's a very simple strategy, it's three steps. Step number one is strategy, step number two is assets, and step number three is promotion. This will help you go from a lurker, which is a person who's not really engaging or posting on a consistent basis, to an influencer who's always on top of their game and they're always in front of their ideal prospects, they're networking, they're getting the right calls and so on. I just spoke to somebody today and she said, Joe, I'm not getting what I need out of LinkedIn. So I said, why are you not getting what you need out of LinkedIn? She's like, I don't know. I need more deals. I said, how many deals do you need? What is your goal? And she was not clear. She's like, I just need more. I want a lot. A lot is not a goal. I'm going to get into that. Then who are you targeting? Who's the most ideal client? And what is the message that you need to send to that ideal client? And then finally, creating an asset library, which includes posts, articles, and media, promotion, which includes a Canton calendar with schedule, 
posting the right way, and reporting. And we're going to get into a little bit of details for each one of these items now. So number one is what is your goal? So when I asked this woman, what is your goal? She said to me, I want more clients. And when I asked the 10,000 business owners that I've trained over the past five years on behalf of Google, I said, hey, tell me, what is your business goal? How much money do you want to make? And they say as much as possible. And if your goal is as much as possible, you're not going to get very far. 96% of businesses are doing less than a million dollars in annual sales. When I started Ajax Union, I wanted to do a million dollars in annual sales. And we got there within 18 months. We were at a million. Then the next year, we did two million. And then at the two years after, we did four million. So we were one of the fastest growing companies in America. And the reason we did that is because we had specific goals. We had both process goals and product goals. So in terms of LinkedIn, what are your goals? If your outcome is that you want to generate, let's say, $100,000 a year in income from LinkedIn, then how many connections do you need to have in order to do that? How many qualified connections that you need to have that are specific types of connections that you can do business with? When I ask people, how many CEOs are you connected with? They don't know. They never checked. Or if you're doing business with CFOs or if you're doing business with residential mortgage brokers, I say, how many of them are you connected with? And they don't know. How many of them are you connected with in the right area? They don't know. So you got to set a goal specifically with how many connections you need, how many qualified connections, and how many real connections. How many people do you know and how many people actually know you? Because a connection is worthless unless it's a real connection. How many articles? How many views would you like? How many likes do you need? How many shares? How many posts? How many calls? And so when I asked this woman how many clients she wants, she said she wants four new clients per month. And I said, if you want four new clients per month, how many phone calls do you have to make? How many conversations do you need to have? She's like, I never thought about that. And I said, you got to get your goal straight. If you want to be successful at LinkedIn, you got to set a goal. She's like, I guess 10. I said, I guess 10. How many did you have in the past three months? Guess how many she said? She said she had three calls in the past three months. Now, how is she ever going to close four deals a month if she needs to have 10 calls per week and she only had three in three months? Something's not working. I said, are you posting, engaging, or messaging. She's like, I'm just engaging. I'm not posting or messaging. I said, you need the trifecta, otherwise it's not gonna work. But first set your goals, then know what you need to do, and then attack it, okay? So step number one is make sure you're really clear with your goals. Step number two, your target market. Who are you targeting? Because if you're targeting everybody, you're targeting nobody. Some people say, Joe, it's very hard for me. When I say, who do you want to do business with? They say, I want to do business with everybody. If you want to do business with everybody, you're not going to be able to be successfully doing networking because networking is a proactive way of asking somebody for something specific. If you go to a networking event and you say, hi, I'd like to do business with anybody, no one's going to give you a client. But if you go in and say, hey, I'd like to meet a residential mortgage broker or a residential real estate agent or a business attorney or a CPA that specializes in tax audits, you're going to find that person. Someone's going to know that type of person. So you got to get specific. So how do you get specific? Well, the way that you get specific is your target client should be an ideal client that you enjoy working with, someone that values your products and services, and you can actually make a profit with them. So think about the people that you've worked with in the past. Think about the categories of people. And if you work in too many categories, pick one or two categories that you're going to focus on for the next 90 days. Somebody that doesn't just buy because of your price, but also because of your value. I want you to think about this. Would you rather somebody buy from you because you're the lowest cost provider? Or would you rather somebody buy from you because you have the best value? Really, let me know. Like, write this down and really think about this. If it's value, write down value. If it's price, write down that price because your target market is going to be very different depending on who you're targeting. And once you pick your target market, then you need to think about, can you make a profit off them? Is it possible for you to actually deliver stuff at a profit? In some target markets, you can't. If I'm selling things to business owners that are less than a million dollars in annual sales, it's very hard for me to sell reoccurring marketing services and actually turn a profit with a client that's only doing $100,000 a year in revenue. He's barely paying himself a, a 20K salary. So what am I going to do? And I had 1,100 clients, 96% of them, were less than a million dollars in annual sales. And they were really happy and we were getting to the top of Google, but they were still losing money. So we had to change our target market. And now our target market for our backend product that costs $200,000 a year is for companies that are 10 to $100 million in annual sales, that have a sales team and a marketing team that are located in New York City, and that value amazing communication, ownership mentality, and versatility, which are our values. So if you think about that, you get that specific, then suddenly the world becomes very, very small. 
And then I add another caveat that I want to work with B2B companies that need lead nurturing and account-based marketing and sales enablement, then suddenly, boom, it's a whole different ball game. And the same thing with your target partner. It should be someone that works with the same clients that you work with. So those are the people that you're going to connect with. When I asked a friend of mine recently, I said, who is the best referral source? It's like anyone that works with my client. I said, who works with your client? He said, CPAs. I said, how many CPAs are you connected to on LinkedIn? Well, and guess what he said? He said, I don't know. I don't know is not good enough. It's not an excuse. I don't know means I haven't really thought about it. And now that I'm making you think about it, I want you to think about how many target partners you actually are connected to, how many of them are qualified, and how many of them you have a relationship with. This is very powerful stuff. And once you have your target market, the third step would be is to get your message in place. What is your message to that target market? If you have someone that values Ikea, is it very different than if somebody values a very expensive furniture store? If you want furniture to last forever, don't buy it from Ikea because when you buy things from Ikea, my wife always says, when you bring home the furniture from Ikea, build it outside because by the time you finish building it, you just have to put it outside for the garbage man to take it. So you might as well just build it outside. It's going to take you a month anyway, so make sure you do it in the summer so you don't freeze in New York. How do you add value to your clients? Why should they pay you more than a competitor? What are you really good at? What are your strengths as a business? And what pain do you solve for your client? Your messaging should talk about the pain. It should also talk about the pleasure because there are two intrinsic motivators that people have. It's either pain or pleasure. They want to run away from pain and they want to run towards pleasure. So pleasure is like what are their needs? What are their goals? What are the current things that they want? And what are their dreams, the future things that they want? And in terms of pains, what are the things that they, the current problems, the urgent issues that they have right now? What are their frustrations right now? And then what are their fears? What are their fears in the future that they're afraid of? And that's what goes into your messaging. But you could only do that if you pick a specific target market and you have specific goals. It's a foundation for all of your marketing. And most people don't have that foundation. And that's why I'm teaching this to you right now so you can create that foundation for yourself. Once you have that foundation, then you move on to assets. Don't just start posting. Don't just start posting because then you'll be coasting. And you really want to get your LinkedIn toasting. You see what I did there? That's part of my wrap. Now let's move on to the assets. The assets, there are three types of assets. There are posts, there are articles, and there are media. So in posts, I hear a lot of times that people are posting one type of post. Most people post information posts. What type of posts do you post typically? I like posting personal posts, not private posts, but personal posts. There's a difference between being private and being personal. I like telling stories about my business, about me, about my family, about things that happened to me because people learn with stories. Like I told you a few stories in this webinar. People also want to get inspired. They want to know things that you've accomplished or quotes or gratitude, things that you're grateful for or messages that are inspirational. People want to get engaged. They want to hear stories that can engage them. They want to hear things that you had that were frustrations or problems that you overcame or problems that they're having and how they can overcome or problems that you have right now that you haven't even overcome. And then information. People want tips and links and FYIs and PSAs. People want entertainment. And there's a balance between the information and the entertainment that things need to be a little quirky, a little funny, a little interesting, depending on your personality. And then people want to help you. People want to offer help. So if you look at my profile, sometimes you see that I post things that I ask questions. I said, hey, does anyone know somebody, blah, blah, blah? Or does anyone have any help with this? Or does anyone know a good graphic designer? And people love to help. So posts are the lifeblood of staying top of mind and creating community. And when you're consistently posting these six different types of posts, then you're different than most people because most people are just posting information that gets no likes, that gets no comments, and that gets no engagement. And you want to be different. You want to be more strategic. These are some recent posts that I posted. I asked people, what do you believe that most people don't believe in? I, I, I took a selfie with a bunch of beautiful people that I had a networking meeting with, an attorney, actually two attorneys, actually three attorneys and a CPA. We met around the table, had a wonderful conversation. And then I posted and I gave them a little shout out. I was on a journey to 150 recommendations. Now I'm on a journey to 200 recommendations. And I thanked all the people, a little bit of gratitude, a little bit of inspiration. Recently, I hit my goal of having 100 selfies during the month of January. And my goal is to get 1,000 selfies over the course of the year. So I have this thing called goal accountability. Every time I hit a goal, I share it. And so I had got 47 likes and 29 comments, which is beautiful. A lot of engagement. 2,600 people saw it. 
And then I had another thing. I just came up with a really great idea today. Want to get engaged followers? This is how you do it. And then boom, 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 boom. And then I send this to my admins and now my admins aren't doing this. And I'm constantly strategizing new ways for me to be able to improve and then share those ideas as I keep growing and learning and changing and improving. And these are some of the things that people want to see. Now, a lot of people don't realize that articles are one of the most powerful ways to go deep with your target audience. And the reason why it's so powerful to go deep with your target audience using articles is because most people don't write articles. They just put posts because they're lazy. But people will spend one to two seconds on a post. Maybe they'll spend seven seconds on a post. Maybe they'll spend 10 seconds on a post if they're sitting there liking and commenting on it. But on an article, the average person spends five to 10 minutes reading an article. So think about the difference between you having a relationship with somebody on LinkedIn that spent five to 10 minutes with you versus they spent a second with you or 10 seconds with you. The difference is astronomical, astronomical. So you have to start writing articles and don't just write articles that are just there to send people to your blog. Write evergreen articles that actually add value, that put on their shoes. I've written over 150 articles on my profile and people often ask me questions and I say, hey, I wrote an article about that. Actually, somebody said, Joe, what's the difference between articles and posts? And I wrote an article about that. Someone said, Joe, how do you brainstorm? I wrote an article about that. Somebody said, Joe, what were the takeaways from the Influencer Summit? I wrote an article about that. Let me show you some samples. Somebody said, Joe, how do you run a successful networking event? You've run dozens and dozens of your own networking events and gone to hundreds of networking events. How do you do it? So I said, let me write an article. I wrote an article about how to do that. Somebody said, Joe, how do you create videos on the go? I wrote an article about how to do that. Somebody said, Joe, what are five things to improve my productivity? I wrote an article. Somebody said, how do you set goals? I wrote an article. Somebody said, why do people in BNI fail? I wrote an article. I wrote an article. Somebody did a challenge called 10 Tips in 10 Days. I wrote an article. Now, if you want to know what an evergreen article is, an evergreen article is an article that will last forever. Evergreen means it lasts forever. So, for example, how to brainstorm content in three steps. That's an article that could last 20 years. It's not going to go away. How to brainstorm content is not going to go away. So you want to write articles that are not just there for the moment, like seven things that happened yesterday that are not going to be relevant or why you should you know, do something on LinkedIn before January 1st or whatever, like an informational or a news article. You're going to spend your time creating articles, create articles that last, that stand the test of time. Like the Influencer Summit takeaways, that will stand the test of time. You want an article that you can use over and over and over. Like for example, Ask the Duck. People tell me, ask me questions that are completely not appropriate questions to ask somebody, not thought out questions. I say, go ask the duck. Literally, go ask the duck and ask me a better question. And I send people a link to this article and it explains to them how to ask better questions and stop wasting people's time. Because often people will send me questions that are completely a waste of time. I got to sit there and ask them another question and they answer and then I ask them another question. I got to pull teeth. So over here, I teach them how to ask the duck, how to have a conversation with the wall and when you get a better question, come to me and I'll answer it better. Okay, try to use your noodle a little bit. Don't eat your noodle, use your noodle. And then I have goals that I set for LinkedIn. People are like, Joe, could you show me your goals? I wrote an article about the goals that I set for LinkedIn and every year I'm gonna change this article with my new goals for the year. So for example, I wanna do a thousand selfies with a thousand LinkedIn connections this year. I wanna do a thousand introductions for people this year. I wanna send a hundred messages a day on LinkedIn through my Operation DM. I want to do 1,000 phone calls this year, 20 a week. And then I want to take off the rest of the week, 20, 15-minute phone calls, and then I take off the rest of the week. So if I do 10 a day, 10 today and 10 tomorrow, I'm done. I'm not doing any more calls. My calls are already like out in February now, which is totally fine. Now, of course, I leave important time. If somebody wants to speak to me and it's really important and it's aligned with my priorities, I'm going to take that call. But that's the idea. These are evergreen articles. And of course, the bottom line is not to worry about how many people read your article. Instead, invest. Instead, your strategy can be that the right people invest lots of time going through your article. So if I get 100 people to read my article that are the right people and they spend 10 minutes with me, I'm way happier than if I get a million people to see a post of a funny cartoon of a guy jumping around. Okay, I want you to ask yourself, does it make sense? Would I rather have a million people see me once, my video to go viral, which I had a video that recently went viral. I had 300,000 people that looked at it. It went viral, it was beautiful. But I got nothing out of it. Whereas an article like this, Somebody reads, they see that I'm the guru, and then they spend $18,000 a quarter with my agency where we do their LinkedIn management or whatever, right? This actually happens. This makes sense. And I don't need millions of people. If I get 100 people to look at this, I'm happy. I'm happy. This is the key. I'm not looking to go viral. I'm looking for 1,000 people to see me 1,000 times. 
A thousand people to see me a thousand times is better than a million people to see me once. That's the key. I want to make a deep impact in my life. I want to go deep. I want to have integrity. That's the key. Now, the third step for, the, for your asset library, when you're creating an asset library, you're putting your posts in, you're putting your articles in, then you want to create media. When it comes to media, there are three different types of major media. A lot of people talk about video, but very few people talk about images and audio. And the key is you want to have the right mix of media. You want to use both images, video, and audio. And with your video, you want to be able to put subtitles. I personally don't put subtitles. I, I like when people actually need to go actually watch and listen to my voice. I don't want people just looking at my video. I want people engaging with me. I, like I said, I would rather 100 people actually listen to it than 1,000 people read subtitles. I want people to emotionally connect with me and become fans with me. And imagery is very, very powerful. I put, take selfies with people. I mean, imagine I have 1,000 selfies and I'm actually going to print those selfies and I'm going to mail it to every single person that I can get their address through a, uh, an app called TouchNote. It's very, very powerful. And the same thing with audio. I get on a lot of podcasts. I'm going to have my team start producing little clips with a one-minute li one-liner from a conference or from a podcast, and I'm going to turn it into a very powerful way to keep sharing powerful content. So that's your asset library, and I showed you mine earlier. I have an actual asset library with every single asset, so then I want to share something. I can quickly go to my asset library, add it to my calendar, and I'm good to go. Now we're talking about calendar, which is promotion. So in terms of promotion, there are three simple steps. Step number one is schedule. Step number two is posting. And step number three is reporting. So schedule is the frequency. Frequency is the exposure that you need to help your business. Like, for example, quantity versus quality. Some people say only post one high-quality post a day. Some people say only post one high-quality post a week or a month. For me, it doesn't work. I want the balance of the two. So once a week, I'll post a really high-quality piece. But every single day, I want to post a video. I want to post an image. I want to post a plain content piece. I want to post a link. I want to do that every single day. And because it's my profile, I get to share as much as I want. And when I ask people, do you want more? People say, I want more, I want more, I want more, I want more. So if I have a thousand people that want to see me a thousand times, I'm going to show them a thousand posts and they're going to be okay with it because I'm not trying to get lucky. I'm not trying to get the masses. So I, I want you to ask yourself, are you focused on quantity or quality? Do you want to go deep or do you want to have the right balance? And what does the balance look like for your business and your own personality? I want you to think about that. And then when it comes to posting, you want to identify the right hashtags to use. This way you can categorize your posts. If you click on Mojo Selfie hashtag, you'll see my Mojo Selfie hashtag. You'll see a thousand selfies there. My goal by the end of the year is you click on Mojo Selfie, you'll see a thousand selfies there. If you want to categorize your videos a certain way, you can use hashtags. You could use popular hashtags like business or social media or LinkedIn, and people will find you through that. Or for example, for the LinkedIn Influencer Conference, it could be Influencer Summit 2019, and you can see all the people that are talking about that conference. Spelling and grammar is important. I have my admins log in to my profile every morning and go through my recent posts and make sure that they edit it once it's already live so that anyone that sees it in the future won't have to see my spelling or error mistakes. And sometimes I make it because I'm just human. We are human. And perfection is the enemy of execution. So you just have to post it and then later go and edit it. And then emoticons, make sure to use them, especially in comments. And then 57% of people use mobile instead of desktop. So think about that. When you're posting something, think about most people are going to be looking at it from their cell phone. So think about the right links to include, the images to add, and so on. And then finally, after you post, you want to have a promotion plan. Who's going to help you promote it? Are you part of an engagement pod? Do you know how that works? And who are you going to tag in the comments that are relevant to your post. The key is to tag relevant people. And if you tag relevant people, your post is going to take off. And finally, you want to think about key performance indicators. What are the numbers that are the most important numbers? I want you to focus on one number. Some people are looking at views. Some people are looking at likes. Some people are looking at this or that. Of course, look at your revenue. Of course, look at your calls. Of course, look at your qualified leads. But in terms of LinkedIn, I want you to focus on your profile views. I want you to ask yourself, what is a profile view worth to you? And for me, I realize that a profile view for me is worth a significant amount of money. As a matter of fact, a profile view is worth over $50 for me. Because for me to get one person to look at my profile a thousand times, I want the right CEO from the right company to see me a thousand times. It's going to end up being a client over time that will spend $200,000 with my company. So if I can just get to 10,000 profile views, Every single 90 days, I know I'm doing the right thing. So I set a goal to get to 1,000 profile views every single week. And you can see my progress from May to August, from August to October. And this is about consistency because a lot of people get all of a sudden once they go viral, 
I don't want to go viral. I want to consistently be producing these results. So from October to December, I hit a thousand, one, two, two or three, two times, three times. And then all of a sudden now, my goal is to kind of maintain it. And I hit a, over a thousand four weeks in a row. And now I'm kind of losing steam a little bit. So I got to figure out, okay, what do I need to do to maintain it and to get people to keep viewing my profile? And that's really the key. The key is, this is, this is literally October to January. And my goal is to keep up a thousand profile views per week for the next year, for the next 90 days, but for the next year in order for me to get to my goal of a thousand people a thousand times. That's the idea. Now, if this sounds like it's too much for you and you want us to do the blueprint for you, if you don't see yourself actually executing on this, we have a program that will literally, will lock, in, lock stock and barrel create this strategy for you. And we're creating a super affordable way to do this. And if you stick around to the very end, what we'll do is we'll also do a Q&A and I'll sit around and answer all your questions. So generally a B2B digital marketing strategy costs $15,000. That's typically what it costs. We do this for our clients all the time. We go down to their office. We do tons of research. It's very extensive. So we figured out a way to offer this program in a very inexpensive way where we don't have to come into your office. You do the research yourself by filling out a questionnaire. And we, for a very affordable fee, we can actually create this whole program for you where we hand you a content calendar, an asset library, a connections dashboard, direct messaging strategy. So let me show you how it works. We'll first give you the strategy. We'll do a call with you. We'll identify your goals, your target market, and your message. We'll identify the pains and gains of your customers. We'll do a content brainstorm. We'll create an asset library for you. And then we'll create a 13-week content calendar with all the ideas that we discussed in our 90-minute strategy session. Then we'll also throw in an optimized profile so you can 10x your profile views to get more opportunities. And we'll also give you a connections dashboard so you can recognize, strategize, and, and prioritize your current relationships. I kind of showed you guys that in a spreadsheet earlier but that's what you'll get as part of the blueprint. Finally, we're also gonna give you a direct messaging strategy, which includes a list of dozens of direct messages you can send people without being salesy. So we give you dozens and dozens and dozens of messages that you can use, so you don't have to think it through, and it specifically talks to your strategy, because once we had that 90-minute strategy and you filled out the questionnaire, you'll be able to do that. So we actually are offering it at a special price, so you'd have to go to the website, to ajaxunion.com slash buy blueprint for you to see the price, we're not actually showing you the price here because we have a very limited amount of bandwidth and probably going to get sold out. We're only doing a certain amount this year because this is a lead-in product for us. And once we hit our goal, we're going to stop offering this. We're going to offer it as part of our bigger packages, but we're not going to offer this alone. So go to our website when you get a chance and you can check out the price there. It's usually $15,000, but it's a lot less, like a significant, a significant, a significant amount less. It's affordable to anyone that has a small business. Anyone that has a tiny little business can afford to do this. We're making it super, super affordable. So go check it out. And this is what the website looks like when you go to ajaxunion.com slash buy blueprint. You just click get started and you'll be able to see all the information. You'll be able to see what David said. We did it for 30 people last year. It was very, very powerful. It's ajaxunion.com slash buy blueprint. Like I said, it's a limited time only. And if you want it, just go there, put in your information, click get started, put in your credit card. We do have a 30 day, we do have a money back guarantee. There's a specific money back guarantee. The details of the money back guarantee are there. So if you're not happy with this, um, we will give you all your money back. So you don't have to worry about that. And the LinkedIn Authority Blueprint was great because it made me think a lot about his business in new ways. Having the dashboard that AJX Union created allowed him to reprioritize his time going forward to make LinkedIn a priority. And now we can communicate with potential clients on LinkedIn rather than email so that he can see his profile, verify his expertise, and using LinkedIn is much more useful once he established the content and now he's, that he's able to be active. And remember, less than 1% of the 500 million people are posting regularly because they don't have a strategy. So if we create the strategy for you, you're gonna be much more successful. Another person said it saved them 50 hours of time because this will take you 50 hours of time, but we have people that we're outsourcing to and we have content writers that will quickly go through everything in a very affordable way, create this whole strategy for you. So we're gonna organize your marketing strategy in two strategy sessions. We're gonna optimize your LinkedIn profile. We're gonna give you the blueprint from which to post and engage. We're gonna give you a 13 week content calendar with ideas. We're gonna give you the missing strategy component for your current execution, and you'll be able to be more confident. So we have a money back guarantee. The details are available there of what the money back guarantee is. It's ajaxunion.com slash buy blueprint. And that's that. Now, if you wanna to talk to me ever, you could always go to ajaxunion.com slash talk to Joe. I would love to speak to you. I think I'm booked out till, for another month or two, but pick a time. If it's urgent, let me know through DM and I'll be happy to get on the phone with you sooner. I do have time sooner, but this is just like proactive because random people get it. 
And there are a bunch of questions that people ask. I'm going to answer a few of these. And then after, I'm going to stay for the Q&A. For the people that are watching this, I'm going to stay later for the Q&A. So first of all, how can you use LinkedIn more efficiently to build content networks? The way they use it more efficiently is to actually have a plan. I don't care what your plan is. I don't care if you create your plan yourself, if you hire a guy for 15K or for $500. I don't care. I want you to create a plan. How do you generate business through LinkedIn and monetize it? By identifying exactly who you can do business with and getting on the phone with them and closing them. How do you email, how do you get email addresses from LinkedIn? Well, LinkedIn recently stopped the ability for you to download email addresses. There's three ways to get email addresses. Right now, if you go to somebody's profile, you can get their email address or you can go to hunter.io. There's a bunch of programs. If you specifically want to know how to do this, just email me or DM me and I will send you exactly how to do this. But right now, if you go to someone's profile, you click on contact info, chances are you'll be able to see their email there. You just can't export everything at the same time. How do you engage on LinkedIn in a way that's not annoying? Very simple. Have a proactive strategy. And I actually have an article that explains the exact messages that you can be using in order for you not to be annoying. How do you scale personalized messaging when, when cold contacting? I use an administrative assistant. I basically tell them exactly who to target. I make a list, I review it, and then I give them the messages and they go, I give them message one, message two, message three. And then I tell them how to engage. I train them, I create a video, and then I let them do it. And then I jump in when I need to jump in. How do you actually convert and qualify leads? Very, very simple. You have a four-step qualifying process. I made a video about this on my LinkedIn profile. The four steps are you first identify the need. Once you identify the need, then you identify the decision maker. Once you identify the decision maker, then you identify the budget. And then finally, you identify the time frame. And once you have those four things, then they are considered qualified and that you will convert. Most people are trying to send proposals to non-qualified leads. That's why things don't close. How, what should I post on LinkedIn in order to successfully reach clients? Post things that are related to their problems, to so their pains and their gains. Your messaging needs to target a very specific target audience. Otherwise, you're going to be wasting your time just posting random things that nobody cares about. And also, don't post just information. Post a six, six different types of posts to keep people engaged. What content is acceptable and how do I frame this to my audience? Personal content is acceptable. Professional content, engaging content, entertaining content, it's all acceptable based on your own values and your own strategy. What is one thing I can do on LinkedIn that by doing so, everything becomes easier? Write your plan down. Don't wing it. Write your plan down. Know what you're going to do. Know how much time you're going to spend on it. I recommend spending at least 15 minutes a day on LinkedIn, five minutes on posting, five minutes on engaging, and five minutes on messaging. Put it in your calendar. Do it every day. Make it a habit, and your life will change. How do I compute ROI on corporate buyers? The way that you compute ROI is to identify the lifetime value of a client. If you want my lifetime value calculator, just DM me and I'll send you the lifetime value calculator. How do I get the most qualified leads on LinkedIn and not waste time? Well, the, the ways to identify who the most qualified leads are and to build real relationships with them. Wasting time means just sending people sales messages. That's the waste of time. How do I organize content to post on LinkedIn? Do it in a spreadsheet. We actually have a spreadsheet that we use as part of the LinkedIn Authority Blueprint. I showed that to you earlier. I'll show it to you again at the end of this. And how do I network with those that seem out of my league? Very simple. No one is out of your league. That's a self-limiting belief. No one is out of your league. And should I be getting a LinkedIn premium account? One of the most popular questions I get. And the answer is, if LinkedIn's important to your business and you're going to be using it a lot, invest in it. Pay for the premium account so this way you don't get stopped by the commercial use limit. But to do any of these things, you don't need a premium account. If you're going to be looking at a lot of profiles each day, they're going to block you after you look at a certain amount of profiles. So you might need a premium account and you can get a free trial, test it out, but you don't need it for this organic reach. You don't need a premium account. LinkedIn wants to get more eyeballs on the website. And that's the reason when you get a mess, when you, somebody sends you a message, you get an email saying one new message instead of sending the actual message because they want you to come back to the website, see the advertising, click on it, and they'll make more money that way. And then we have obviously Operation DM. Look up hashtag Operation DM. If you're not sending direct messages to people, most people aren't because you're afraid. It's because you're not posting. And it all works together. Posting, engaging, and messaging works together. It actually freaking works. I know this because I generate revenue. Not just selling LinkedIn stuff, but selling coaching stuff, selling marketing stuff, selling all types of things. This really, really, really works. Reach out to me. I'm happy to speak to you about this. I'm happy to show you my strategy. If you hang out to the end, I'll show you my actual strategy. Once again, if you have additional questions and you're watching this on our website, go to marketing at Ajax Union, email marketing at ajaxunion.com. We'll answer every question you have. We want questions. The reason we want your detailed question is because that'll help us create more content ideas. So if you're watching this, or you're watching the replay, I want you to email us, marketing at ajaxunion.com. Ask us any, there's no question that's too stupid. You literally ask us anything. We're here to literally help you in your business. You don't have to spend any money with us. 
We want to help you take your business and your life to a whole new level. Thank you very much for being part of this. Once again, my name is Joe Applebaum. The name of our company is Ajax Union, and I'm so excited to be helping hungry entrepreneurs go from frustration to motivation. If you're interested in the blueprint, click on ajaxunion.com slash buy blueprint and get started today. Once again, we have a money back guarantee, so you're not taking any risk. We'll talk to you guys soon.